The Department of Social Development will be working with the Border Management Agency to ensure the protection of children at South African borders. This is part of the Easter holiday operations. The department says it will also be working with neighboring countries to verify the travel documents of minors. Joining us is David Chabalala, who is the Child Rights Advocacy Manager at the Department of Social Development. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks very much um, for your time. But give us a bit of, very briefly, a background to uh, what led to you taking this, this decision. Good afternoon, Mr. Mvoko, and good afternoon to your viewers. Thank you very much for having me. Let me begin by indicating that back then in 1994, when we got into democracy led by the very first democratically elected uh, president, Utata Mandela, the late May, so rest in peace, we ratified what we call the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, and subsequently in 2000, the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, and of course the Constitution in 1996, and many other legal frameworks like the Children's Act, Child Justice Act. So as to what kind of pro propelled us to get into this arrangement. We've got a memorandum of understanding with Zimbabwe and of course with Lesotho to, to, to manage a number of issues inclus inclusive of unaccompanied or undocumented children. So yes, with regard to the constitution, we know we've got chapter, section 28 of the constitution where we are saying the rights of children should be you know, upheld. And of course, we're not saying only South African born children. So every child that is in the vicinity of South African borders must be protected. So we are meeting with uh, the, you know, the colleagues from Zimbabwe, making sure that because this Easter weekend is one of those peak, uh, you know, periods where people are traveling, and of course others are traveling with children. So we want to make sure that ch children are not traveling alone, and when they are traveling, they are having documents to travel. So those are major principle, uh, uh, you know, issues that we are looking at, but more importantly, to make sure that we protect these children. But in the, in the, in the context of making sure that really we work uh, within the precinct of, uh, of, 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 the, of the law. But uh, does, this, does this problem only happen during Easter weekends or does it intensify during, during Easter? Well, it's a continuous challenge. Uh, you remember, Mr. Mvoko, perhaps a few weeks ago, there was a some kind of a transportation, a bus, if I'm not mistaken, where it was found there were children, I think from Ethiopia. Uh, so it happens now and then, but during this uh, Easter weekends and many other festive seasons, there's, there's influx of people traveling to South Africa, inclusive of children. So that is why we thought we must really go there, work with our counterparts, and then make sure that really we raise awareness and make sure that we intervene where necessary. Now, your statement says that um, you have to make sure that uh, children would have to make sure that they, they themselves present um, their, 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 their travel documents, assuming that there are people behind child trafficking and other, and, and other, hills, uh, other ills. How will that, in other words, a child having their travel documents with uh, in hand, how will that stop such syndicates um, and, 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 and people from doing what um, the wrongs, uh, committing the wrongs that um, they are hell bent on committing? Maybe let me put it uh, differently. Uh, actually, our standpoint is that we don't need a child that travels unaccompanied. So, in no, in no way that will, uh, you know, appreciate a child with documents. Uh, you know, traveling alone. What we do, even if they've got those documents, we trace their parents because it's, it's really not on to have, have a child traveling unless if they have legal documents to say, no, I'm joining my father and parents who are in South Africa. They are here legally. So, yeah, so, so, so such a child will not be allowed entry? They, 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 they won't. We need to, we need to, 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 to trace because we need to know where are they going what, what, what are the reasons for them to be uh, traveling? Because we can't just do it willy-nilly. It, it's, it's very dangerous. And, of course, it subscribes or condoning this child, child trafficking. So we do an intense investigation about their travelings.
Now, you, um, may, you announced this uh, move or what you intend um, to do this uh, weekend following a meeting, the statement says, um, with uh, Zimbabwean authorities. Does that mean that there's an acknowledgement um, on the part of, uh, their, of, of, of our neighbors that um, this one is a problem and uh, they, have, uh, they have a role? Uh, to play in, in stopping this practice? Definitely so, 100%. Both countries have acknowledged, by virtue of having gotten into an MOU, we acknowledge that there's a problem. And of course, we must solve this problem, uh, you know, uh, collectively. Where we found challenges, like for instance, children undocumented, unaccompanied, we make sure that the Zimbabwe government helps us to locate this children with their rightful parents. So yes, it's important we all acknowledge and the Zimbabwean uh, government has acknowledged that this is a problem that we forever are experiencing. I'm sure there's value in blitzes of this nature that happened during Easter weekends or during the uh, uh, a festive season, but um, uh, none of that stops uh, people who are determined who are making a living um, out of this thing. All they will do is simply not do it during the Easter weekends or during, during the festive season. No, indeed. I think there's, there's, there's a call. I mean, your you 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 comment, I mean, makes us to think we don't have to do it, you know, you know occasionally. It should not be sporadic. We need to have a full-blown campaign, meaning like we do with gender-based violence. We need to make sure that uh, it's 36, 36, 65 days, uh, you know, in a year. So I, I, I agree we need to intensify this campaign. But is there a, an acknowledge or, or at least a maximum cooperation among other, uh, I mean, government agencies that this has to be a collective or a, uh, uh, effort? Because, I mean, the other day, of course, the uh, Border Management Authority had its own briefing where they were talking about, you know, um, increased hours and so on and, and, and so forth. But not everyone is convinced that um, they are as empowered to do the job as uh, they should be. And uh, the same can be said about the uh, police and, of course, other state law enforcement agencies, I mean, um, uh, um, agencies. But when you meet among yourselves, and look at how to deal with this problem uh, comprehensively. Is there an acknowledgement that each has a role to play and uh, these agencies are actually uh, equipped to do what they need to, uh, to do? Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Bogo, for that question. Uh, actually, uh, uh, let me put it this way. We, by virtue of us having ratified the UNCRC and the African Charter, we are required to come up with what we call the National Plan of Action for Children. Fortunately, it runs with the, you know, the, the, the administration. Like now we are reviewing, uh, we are going to be getting into the fifth National Plan of Action for Children that will run with the term of office for the sixth, seventh administration. Within that, we are having all the departments, inclusive of those that you have given examples with. We just have to intensify, improve on our collective efforts. I must admit on behalf of uh, everybody here that our, 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 our collective or our working to, together as government agencies and of course with other organs of civil society is not at a point where we can say we are excelling. So that's another area that we need to, we, we need, we need to really harness our efforts because for now I'm not afraid to say there are elements where we work in silos. So we are prioritizing that as the Office on the Rights of the Child coordinating you know, oversight and, and you, know, you know, working together, we are really prioritizing that area. Um, speaking of prioritization, I mean, you are focusing on Bayet Bridge and Hrobla's uh, uh, bridge borders. Does that mean that uh, you don't have this problem um, in, uh, at the borders we share with Eswatini, Botswana, Namibia, for example? Well, there are problems, but the prevalence uh, may be different. And, uh, of course, allow me not to uh, get into the statistics because I don't have them now. The, the, the issue or the principle here is that, you know, one is too many. We've got an MOU with Lesotho, and, of course, your Sazilent. It, it does happen. And, like I said, 
we don't have to make it an, a, you know, a sporadic uh, kind of an intervention. We need to have a plan where we forever are addressing this issue. So it's important in all the areas, and it's happening in all the areas, but of course not at the same level.